This is Hayden Sparks. I am here with Congressman Chip Roy, a Republican of Texas. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Great to be with you, Hayden. Yeah, great to be here at the convention. Great to be in Texas. I got up this morning, flew from D.C., so great. Good to be here. Excellent. Last time we spoke, we talked about the border, mm -hmm. and you indicated that Governor Abbott should shut down the border. Yeah. CBP just reported nearly a quarter million encounters with yeah. illegal immigrants in May. But Governor Abbott has said he's expressed two concerns with shutting down the border, and I want to give you a chance to respond to those. Sure. First, that local police in Texas could be prosecuted, and that if they are expelled, they'll just come right back over the border. You're an accomplished prosecutor and lawyer. How would yeah. you respond to those arguments? Yeah, well, you, well first of all, um, and we're talking about, there's a number of different things we're talking about. Uh, let's first talk about what the state of the border is, right? Because th that's actually the you know underlying issue. This administration is refusing, flat out refusing to secure the border. They're intentionally and purposely doing it. And they're endangering Texans and endangering migrants and endangering ranchers, empowering cartels. Uh, you just said we had a quarter million apprehensions this last month. We are now pushing three million apprehensions during this uh, administration. We are now at 800 and something thousand gotaways throughout the duration of this administration. Uh, and uh, we've had 107,000 people die from uh, uh, overdoses and fentanyl poisonings. And so we're truly under assault and the cartels are empowered. So the question is, what do we do about it when the administration refuses? They're allowing asylum laws to be the exception that swallows our border security rules. So what do we do? I, I don't believe that we, Texas, uh, should be standing back and allowing this to occur, occur uh, until we get another Republican president, Lord willing, in two and a half years. Because well, first of all, we got to make that happen. In the meantime, Texas is dealing with this every single day. 2,000 people crossing every day that are the known gotaways, right? 8,000 every day that are being apprehended. They're turning themselves in. So yes, we should uh, uh, empower Texas to deal with the invasion. It is an invasion. Declare it an invasion. Operate like it's an invasion. Now, what I will tell you is, the governor isn't wrong that there is a risk of what will happen to law enforcement uh, individuals, and he is the chief executive. He's the one who has to deal with that risk. If he does that, we've seen that 19 cops in Austin have been persecuted by the radical leftists in Austin because they were doing their job during the riots. You send DPS, you send law enforcement down to the border and have them do the job Border Patrol is supposed to do, and most of them are going to get hauled into court under civil rights violations I mean, you know, sued by the radical left, and they're going to have to pay for that and deal with that. So we do need a plan to deal with that in Texas. I do think the governor's right to raise those concerns, but it doesn't mean we don't declare an invasion. It doesn't mean we don't do what's necessary to secure the border. We need to re reconcile those issues and have that conversation. One final point. We've actually had some success, limited, based on the fact that the governor instituted the inspections. That is slowing down the traffic. Mexico was freaking out because of that. We shouldn't abandon that strategy. If they aren't going to work with us, if they're not going to stop the flow, shut down I-35. Now, I know that hurts Texans. I get it. I understand election year. I don't want to shut it down. We've got inflation, cost of goods going up because of this administration. But we got to stop this, and you can only do it with force. And that's, that's my two cents on it. So would it be fair to characterize your position as, yes, they could be prosecuted, but at this point, because of the cost to human life, it's a risk that we need to take. Well, look, they could be sued, and I'd say it's a risk we need to take. We're talking about law enforcement. Which law enforcement would be open and amenable to it? Have we talked to sheriffs in South Texas who are saying, you know what, I'll do it? Have we uh, talked about people who might uh, volunteer? Maybe there's veterans, maybe there's retired police officers. Uh, and then yes, what should the state do with respect to DPS? What can we do to protect them from litigation? But let's not go run away from that fight. Let's figure out how to address it. And let's say, look, we're not gonna allow these people to be hauled into federal court on our watch because they're doing what we wanna do to secure the border. We should have that conversation here in Texas. We shouldn't walk away from it. You were recently in a committee hearing and you were bringing attention to the problem of sexual assault on the southern border because of the illegal immigration. Yeah. And there was a moment where Congressman Nadler seemed to almost throw up his hands and say, well, there's sexual assault in every state in our union, as if the context was unimportant. What do you think it's going to take for Democrats or those who do not see border security as a priority to see the, the problems that are happening on the southern border? Well, I mean, I would invite and have invited all of our Democratic colleagues to come down and go with us and let us take you to the entirety of the border, not just come in and do a quick photo op at you know, El Paso at the fence like our you know supposed vice president did. Um, they need to come see for their own eyes and talk to the people on the ground. They need to come talk to the Hispanic community. 
throughout South Texas. The Hispanic community, which just revolted and elected a Republican, obviously, in 34, uh, Myra Flores. Uh, come down and talk to the leadership in Webb County, where Senator Cruz and I were last September, where long, lifetime Democrat Hispanics are livid and, and, and frustrated with the Biden administration. Uh, come talk to them and see what's really happening. And and recognize the reality of what this means for young girls and for women that are being abused by cartels. Um, that's, that is not to say that there aren't people who are seeking a better life and that we don't take that into consideration for how we manage the flow. But it is the opposite of humane. It is the opposite of compassionate to allow cartel-run open borders to have people coming up in caravans, coming into our community, especially in the heat of the summer in Texas, potentially being abused, being then having to pay six, five, you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars to the cartels. It is irresponsible and inhumane to do that, and my Democratic colleagues don't care. I have one final question for yeah. you, and we've talked a little bit about policy, but I just want to ask you, Congressman, man to man, patriot to patriot, when you see the condition and the direction of our country, what's on your heart? Well, you know, I've been talking about this a lot lately, um, and I'm getting ready to kind of lean into this a bit. You know, 2026 is our 250th birthday as a country. Uh, we've got to decide whether or not we're going to live free. And that's a question that's in front of us, and we're going to have to choose. Uh, when we started this country, right, there was this flags, join or die. There's the motto, New Hampshire, live free or die. Uh, what is our motto for 2026? Because I can tell you this, my kids and grandkids are going to live in freedom. I want that to be under the stars and stripes, and I want it to be in a unified uh, United States of America. But one way or the other, they're going to live free. And so we need to restore sovereignty, restore order, restore law and order, stop spending money we don't have, stop this woke nonsense that's destroying our, our uh, freedoms and destroying our country, ripping us apart. We need to you know, restore education freedom, health care freedom, energy freedom, get this economy rolling again, and stop government from interfering with our, our way of life. Um, but the, the clock's ticking. Congressman, our time is always too short, but it's a privilege to be able to speak with you. Thank you so Pleasure. much. Pleasure. Y'all keep it up.